That's a bit better, isn't it? Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Nick, and I'm about to undertake the restoration of a little long keel cutter called Idler, built in 1940. Idler was built uh, by what we believe was Walter Wiggins in Greater Wakering. Uh, she's built from pitch pine on oak frames, uh, oak keel as well. She's 23 foot long. Um, I think originally had a Bermudan uh, sail on her. However, she's currently rigged or was currently rigged as a, a gaff cutter. And how she came to be in my possession is a little bit of a convoluted story. So I bought her down in North Wales um, about 14 years ago and I moved her up to the east coast of Scotland and had her and owned her up here for a little while. Now she suffered some damage uh, to her ribs in a storm and I took her out of the water. Um, at the time I was in my 20s, all the rest of it you know where I'm going. Sadly neglected her a little bit. I ended up moving her from place to place as I moved from house to house in, in, in those days. Um, we eventually managed to get her into the back garden where I intended to repair her in a, in a property we, we were in last. And um, we got her in through the field at the back. Now the farmer helped us out with a, a, a high ab and managed to get her in. Uh, the crop was out the field so he was able to get access. However, when we moved from that house, um, there was a crop in the field so we couldn't get the boat back out. Um, not much had progressed in terms of restoration at that point and I think we just said goodbye to her. We just went, this is not going to happen, okay, the, the, the dream's a bogey. So we said goodbye and we left her to her new owners, the new people who bought the house. And uh, that was it, that was as far as I was concerned, the end of Idler, we'd never see her again. Then something strange happened during lockdown, uh, the COVID-19, this is uh, 2020, so this is, we're still actually enduring some of the, uh, the restrictions at the moment. Um, however, at the start of this situation, uh, I got an email from somebody I didn't know, and that somebody was the, the owner of Idler, or the new owner of Idler, and he has decided he wasn't wanting to undertake the restoration work of Idler. In fact, he was actually going to uh, build his own boat. He's going to do a, a new build project. And um, so stay tuned, see if you can check out his channel. I'll put a link down uh, if and when he gets that up and running. And um, check it out, definitely. It'll be, a good, it'll be a good one. And he came back to me and said, he's not going to do the work on Idler. Um, he needs the space for his workshop. So if I'm interested, um, have at her. So my initial reaction was of course no. <laughs> How 
However, curiosity got the better of me. I wanted to see how she was. I wanted to see what condition she was in. And I, I suppose, sentimentally, I just wanted to see her again as well. So I, I arranged the visit, popped along and had a look. And, um, well, it's no point me telling you. Here's, here's some video footage uh, I took at the time. Here she is, first time we've seen her in about five years. Let's have a peek, she's not good. Yeah, fair bit of rot there. A wee peek around there. It doesn't look nearly as rotten as I was expecting her so far. See what's inside though, that's when we're gonna have our problems. Externally, looking not too bad. We've got water coming out of her here. That can't be a good thing. It presumably means there's water sitting inside her. And it's been five years in Scotland. So it's going to be fresh water, I'm afraid, and that is not good. There they are, looking up the stem post. Got a fairly nasty looking bit of rock going on in here. It carries on all the way down through here, the staining, moving in towards the, the rabbit there, so... I'm not too pleased looking at that. That's it's pretty crumbly, pretty black. I don't think that bodes well. Hauling it down as it carries on and down down there and tucked into the this knot as well. We've got starting to flaking around here, but if we get towards the bottom, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look great. Not as bad as it looks. Just sitting up on deck here, as you can see it's a wee bit green. Got the bow looking aft. We've got this lovely little uh, weather shield built on top there looking after, keeping most of the rain out of it. Just wiped down the decks a little bit, the four decks, just to get the worst of the moss off it. Pulled up a couple of these pieces here, and these are largely all bedded down. This is what she's covered in, so it's, it looks like some sort of uh, some sort of pine. Some sort of pine decking. You can see the, the knot there and the colour of it, with this sort of uh, glass fibre of some sort over the top. Obviously we used canvas back in the day but somebody's come along and put uh, some fibreglass over the top of that. Well, not a bad job actually considering that was a bit with a crack and we're actually not really looking at any rot really. It's actually, I would say, hopefully looking fairly salvageable. It's, it's, it's fairly rotten around about the edge of these where it's been leaking. And if you look on the inside of it, you'll see move a little bit later on. Definitely there in these, these carlins here, these are all going to be uh, probably needing need to replaced up around here but otherwise all good. Our uh, pin rail, I don't think it's even sturdy enough to hold itself frankly. Here it is. A little crack up here, Just showing us what's happening in the poach roof. A little bit of uh, hulking in there. The wood itself, again, patches, not replacements, patches so far. Everything is patchable. A few replacements so far, so fingers crossed that continues. Fill the brim of fresh water. Hooray, that's going to give us all kinds of problems. Let's have a look under here, right in there. Nice old lead beam. That doesn't look great. And whatever it goes into this goo down here, it's not going to be good either, so... That's all the old uh, tar, is it? Inside of the deck beams don't actually look that bad underneath. We'll get to all the problems later on. 
those two planks that are pushed away down there, so I don't really look unfixable. Plenty of water streaming in from here though. Lots of staining. Not quite sure what that means, if that is some sort of iron fastening somewhere. I'm given that they're red, but they are quite brown as well, so it might just be simple mud. Not quite sure why we're getting that browny iron, that browny red. Still dripping up here in the seams. It's okay. Yeah, it's slimy, but not soft. I just don't really want to be sticking my hand into this minging water because I know exactly what's going to be down there. And it's not going to be good. I'd like to explore aft anyway. Obviously, I had quite a lot of rain recently. I don't know if you can see much in the darker here. Nice, uh, roomy cabin. Anyway, nice little space. We have around the back here we've got definitely will to make that out. The original builder's mark there. W. Wiggins Builder Idler 1940 at Greater Wakering. I would love to know any information from anybody about anything to do with this. Done a quick Google search, but it doesn't tell me much apart from there was something a boat building yard a little bit later in the 1950s. But outside of that, I don't know much else. Certainly no mention of this particular boat. If anybody out there has any ideas, let me know, I'll be really appreciate that. Let's keep going a wee bit aft. This is obviously where the engine was. I'll come back in a second here with a camera. Sorry, with a, with a torch and see if we can get ourselves a bit more light. You can't see much in here. Right, I just thought we'd have a wee nosy about with a torch. I'll just use the the light on the phone but we'll have a good nosy about see what we can see with a bit of headlamp just so you guys might be interested to see the condition of a boat that you may be one day thinking about restoring or somebody says they got one in the back garden do you fancy it I don't know anybody who do something so foolish do you so that's the tops of the or the bottom sorry of the uh, pin rail so I've drilled that wee hole, you won't be able to see it obviously because of the light, but I've drilled that wee hole somewhere about there. In fact, is that it there? Yeah, it's about there, so still a wee bit of water to come out, as you can see. And the wood's black, but it doesn't feel rotten. I've, I've stuck a few pointy things into it, it doesn't really look like it's that bad. A big juicy spider up there. Floor here, but it doesn't seem to be matched by anyone else. It doesn't, nothing else seems to be as juicy as that. So I wonder why that's given the extra strengthening. We do have beaching legs up here, so that might be something to do with that. So they're obviously running up into these. So it may be something to do with that. How many floors we've got to be our cockpit? So we've got, like I say, we've got this big uh, cover built over the top to keep it dry, which is probably the reason it's in such good condition. Uh, climb in here, one second. Let's have a look at the stem post in the transom and some wasps and more wasps. Some caulking popping out the back there, I don't think you can see it. Stuff in 
use. Hopefully that's all full of tar. I think that should do something to protect it a little bit. And like I say, she's an old boat. It does feel like it's full of mud though. Which is not great. Bitumen or tar run into there in the bottom. So that'll run either side of these seams and hopefully keep the worst of the water unless it's submerged out of those little joints which will keep her a bit better than we'd be otherwise. Sorry, it's not the most entertaining video, it's just somebody scratching around in mud, but. Sometimes the, the train spotters amongst us find this sort of interesting. No offence, obviously. I personally would love to watch something like this. Well, as you probably guessed, uh, I went for it. So we uh, made the agreement that I would take the boat as soon as I possibly could, so I had to get her out of the field was the first priority. So we did a little bit of chainsawing, brought the hedge down to a level we reckoned the, uh, the truck would be able to get in at, and I contacted the, the farmer. So the farmer needed to come along and help us out uh, with his uh, high lifter, and uh, he very kindly let us mess around with ropes and strops and all kinds of random bits of chain and we basically lashed her to the end of these forks and uh, horsed her out of the uh, out of the garden and dropped her at the end of the field um, for collection a couple of weeks later by the um, delivery truck. So there's a couple of pictures of that coming up here. Give you just a wee once over of a total looking at the hull the whole way around. The wee cordon setting up there to stop any kids from messing about. So here we are. We've got her in a field, so we've got her out of the back of the garden and we've got her into the field just now, so she's uh, get a chance to get all the way around her get a really good look at her. So this was the side that was against the, the, the hedge row and we couldn't really see her before, so have a closer look at it. You can see we've got some pretty bad cracking in these planks. This plank is completely opened up here. It actually looks like there's a wee join in here, so this might actually have been fitted later anyway. It might have been a repair, because you can see it carries on up here as well, so I think that's possibly been repaired. That was our beaching leg in there, so that's possibly why the reason we've got these problems, that's maybe levered up the deck area there. Um, obviously these, uh, these are not helping, that's exacerbating that issue, but we've got her, we've got her. She's out of the garden, that's the first hurdle over. The next hurdle is in a couple of days we're going to get the high ab along here, they're going to pick it up and bring it back to hopefully the, the work site. We'll get her uh, landed down beside the workshop, get a wee shelter built over the top of her and then we can start working. Hopefully get this uh, paint back over and expose all the problems, make a list of all the problems, figure out how we're going to solve them. All right. Collection by the, the truck was a, was a bit of a hoot. It was, uh, I was expecting about an hour lifting and loading. Um, and just messing about and getting things all quickly lashed down. Um, however, it, it, the time it took me to take the barrier down um, that I'd put up around the boat so that no children started messing about underneath the supporting legs, um, they'd already got the, the high up lifter over the top of the boat, had the chains and the strops largely around it, and they were basically saying, Get out of the way, we're lifting up the boat now. 
Uh, they had it on the back of the truck in about 20 minutes from pulling up alongside it. I mean, it was so fast. Um, and then home, I cut down some branches, overhanging branches of the track, and uh, got it down to the house. So here she is, she's just arrived, she's got a, uh, obviously she's over on her side there with a, the, couldn't get her standing up right so she's over on her side. We're trying to figure out how we're going to get her to stand up without sliding off the truck, smashing into the shed and destroying everything. It's all good, all fun and games. Now it is a shame, I have, I have lost a, a large portion of the footage of the, the early stages of the, of the boat move. Um, uh, an administrative error on, on my part, I'm afraid, and I, I've uh, deleted them. <laughs> um, never mind, onwards and upwards, eh? So, getting the boat actually off the flatbed and into the, the area beside the workshop was actually probably the biggest trial. It was it's quite a small area, it's quite a small access to that area, although I had cut back some of the hedges and tried to level the ground as best as possible. I've done a lot of digging in, in, in the weeks uh, uh, leading up to this. Um, it still wasn't quite big enough and we had to basically, basically they lifted the boat up, because as you see the boat's on its side, and we lifted the boat up, and bumped it on its side on the keel, moved the high ab over and then so it, so it lifted the top section and then picked the whole boat up dropped it back on its keel, moved the high over, so it was effectively slipping along in its, in its slings in order to try and get the boat to stand more upright because it, as, as, as it was lying on the truck it was just going to lift up sideways and pump it down sideways and obviously wanted it standing up so it was a little bit of jiggery pokery getting it actually into the, uh, the, the workshop area uh, but we made it and uh, what you'll see now is just a short couple of slides of me just sort of scratching and scraping and just having a good poke about basically you know boy with a new toy just you know getting stuck in about it just trying to see what's going on so um, enjoy that it's just for piece of uh, for for the fullness of the picture
So that's where we stand this week. So the boat is in situ. We've got it a tent over the top of it and we're ready to start investigating and, and taking it to pieces really. So next week we will be getting really into the nitty gritty. We're going to have a look at some of what are the obvious major issues that need to be addressed. We'll do scraping, scratching, breaking, pulling, smashing and generally just destroying an old boat. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, Please like, please share, and um, check out my Patreon account. Um, anything you can do to help out with the project is greatly appreciated. Even if it's just coming along, taking some photos, getting a couple of selfies alongside the boat or anything like that, please feel free to come along and be a part of this boat story. Okay, take it easy. Bye for now.